Well, I am so excited. Today we go beyond the studio on the Tom Joyner Morning Show and on TJ TV with the one, the only, Jasmine Guy. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Look at your haircut. Do you like it? I do like it. Were you I'm, scared? I'm trying to think, do I go curly? Do I go slick back? But I am loving it. Because you know what? I, I said, I am not going into the 50th year of my life with that ponytail. Okay, well, let's not talk about ponytails right now, but... <laughs> okay, that's not a real point. I mean, like a ballet ponytail. Are you going to 50? When do you I, turn? 50. Really? I have to tell y'all because you're like, do you remember that episode in the library? Hell no. <laughs> episode. Are you kidding me? But what's yeah, funny to right, me, baby? But that's what life. What is interesting to me is though is I didn't know, and I've never talked, I've never personally interviewed you, but I didn't know that you talked the same in person as you did on a different world. I don't feel like I do. Well, <laughs> she talks up here. But I could, but before I could see your picture, I mean, I knew it was you. I mean, you still have. That's what just what I can do. Look oh. totally different. You are still doing But let me just say, okay. Whitley ain't me. And well, what, are, what are the differences election, between you and Whitley? Well, during this election, she might have been with Mitt Romney. <laughs> like Stacey Dash? <laughs> yeah. What's that about? But, so all through the show, I dealt with that. Mm -hmm. This ain't me. But I'm acting, and I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I felt like people never really knew me, if they thought I was Whitley. Like I go to the airport, they say, where's your Louis Vuitton? I'm like, I'm trying to get my clothes in a bag. <laughs> That's all you can do? Yeah. You are hilarious. But you are, you are still working. How fabulous is that? I'm still working. Still God working bless. Yes. Okay, I'm a witch on Vampire Diaries. They killed me, and they bring me back. But because you're a vampire, they can do that, right? I'm a witch. Oh, now I'm you're a witch. Rules are. Yeah, I'm a witch. <laughs> Whatever. I just want to come back. I love doing that show, and I've done an independent film called October Baby. Yes. And then I have What About Us which was just a little short film I thought would, would get a little attention, but we all want to hear about that. Well, but, and it's, it's about missing and exploited children, correct? Yes. So, I mean, but it, it stands to, to the way that things go with our babies that are missing in our community, that they don't get the attention. Why was it important for you to do this film? There are three families. Mine, a middle-class family, and a basketball player's family. And his baby was found. And I think that's profound. Because how does Nancy Grace choose which baby to find? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about our babies? And if they are not found, what happens to them? Right. Which is also another cause I'm involved with, which is sex trafficking in not only Atlanta, but nationally. But I was shocked to find out that Atlanta is the hub. Of sex trafficking? Yes. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> it's really? major here. It's major. And you know what I heard from a friend of mine who, who dealt with this situation um, is that a lot of the online dating sites are the ways that these pimps find women who are vulnerable and open to, to just wanting love. And they get all caught in the trap. Hmm? They want to know that they belong to something. And whether they get their, I can't say ass. Um, well, you, you just said it. I'm sorry. Okay. Leap. Um, whether they are beaten, whether they are tortured and raped, they begin to think that's where they belong. They're babies. Yeah. I have a 13-year-old. 
I, I mean, you mold their minds, at least from 13 to 20, you know, and I think we need to get more involved with that. But I also love that Tom Joyner is into HBCUs and building our own culture. Right. And I feel that's what a different world was about. That Cosby knew we needed to support HBCUs even back then. Yes. So what do you tell your 13-year-old? Because I'm really interested in this because we there was a story about a 14-year-old girl who was just found um, in Texas in, in a trunk on by the side of the road. And I was saying, I mean, I have two kids as well that you cannot be with them every single second of the day. And as they get older, what do you tell your 13-year-old about how to protect um, themselves from all of these dangers? She is so protected. She, she said to me, I'm sh I'm socially immature because <laughs> she's so protective. You know, when when I went to New York at seventeen, automatically from the subway in Penn Station to the street, I changed. You ain't gonna mess with me. Right. But we're not all um, street smart. No, we're not. We educate our babies, but they don't know. Put your hand over that purse. Act like you belong to somebody. And our kids are walking around like, help me, help me. Yep. And those are the vulnerable ones. They would have come back home. They would have come back home in days. And then they get caught up in self-promotion. Mm -hmm. Where they feel like, oh, now I mean... I'm somebody. But also, we need to be more aware. I don't think that as an African community, we can afford to ignore this problem. Absolutely not. It happens to a lot of immigrant children and women, but it's happening a lot with us. Right. And I worked on this project, What About Us, because I thought it was a powerful way to say, look at the disparity of the classes. Look what happens to the basketball players, one, um, baby, the middle class, white families, baby, and that discarded class of maybe Hispanic, Latino, right. black, that nobody cares about. And so, and the film is entitled, the short film is entitled, What About Us? And it premieres today, Friday, at the third annual Bronze Lens Film Festival uh, at the Atlanta Marriott Marquis. Um, yes, I moved to Atlanta about four years ago. Not by uh, my own, uh, <laughs> yeah. but... And I said to my daddy, I can't work out of Atlanta, but I work more here. I was going to say, it has changed. Atlanta is like the new Bollywood. They're like, it's like black, the black hub for Hollywood now. So. Absolutely, but it's also giving voice for me to the artistic community. There's so much talent here. And there's so much stuff to talk about. And um, I love that. I w always wanted to be politically involved and culturally involved. But Whitley didn't let me do that. Because that heifer is crazy. <laughs> and you just gave the Whitley look. <laughs> Your eyebrow went up and everything. <laughs> and do Whitley in a minute. What should I just say? <laughs> Tom Joyner in the morning. Oh, that is funny. So how can we find out more about your projects and, and keep up with what you're doing? We'll be at the Bronze Lens Festival here right. in Atlanta. Um, we have a screaming at 5 o'clock. And whoever is in the neighborhood, come. Come okay. see the movie. It's 15 minutes. But it's important. It's known. It is important. And your website is IamJasmineGuy.com. Correct? 
I am jasmineguide.com. <laughs> Thank you, boo. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate you. We have gone beyond the studio on Tom Joyner TV and the Tom Joyner Morning Show with Miss Jasmine Guy. I come to Dallas. Would you please? I love that show. I love everybody on it. Okay, well, you let us know. And funny. Yeah. Okay, let us know. Let me know. Okay, done deal. Okay. Take care. Good luck with the film. We love you. Thank you. God bless.